Yeah, hello everyone. Good evening. So yesterday we have we are created a few simple APIs to retrieve the user information and to find the user information. So now I am going to create another API to create the user. Okay. So now we are going to write the API to create the user. So now let me create the method for that. Okay. Public. Public. So what it will return? Let me uh, return as of now wide. Save user. Okay. We are going to write API to save the user in array list. So, so far to retrieve the information for to retrieve the information, uh, which HTTP method we have used get mapping. So uh, if you want to retrieve the data, we should use always get request. So get get HTTP request method. Now we are going to create the resource, create the resource in the sense we are going to create the user. So for that, we need to pass the data from REST client. Okay, we need to pass the data from REST client or Postman. So if you we need to pass the data from Postman and that data we have to receive in our controller and that data we need to store into array list. So how we can get the data from the client? I'm going to write the code now. So how we can do? So this is a post mapping. So if you want to send the data from the uh, Postman or REST client, so we, it should be post request. Okay, so now let me create post mapping. There is a method called post mapping. Sorry, there is an annotation called post mapping. So here, let me write uh, create user. Create user is the API, which I am going to invoke from the postman. And now, how we can retrieve the data? So there is a annotation called request body. You can see there is a annotation called request body. So with the help of this annotation, we can get that user information from the postman or REST client. So how we can get? So as part of user DTO, as part of user DTO. So whenever you are sending request to your API, so data will come from client as part of user DTO require user DTO object to save save user method for the save user method. I will debug and show you how we are getting the values. So okay, so now where we need to store these values, we need to add it into our array list. So we are we are already we are already having five users here. So now I am going to add another user by invoking create user api so let me add user list user list dot add just you need to pass that dto that's it now only thing is that now how we can create how we can generate a id so here i have hard coded one two three four five so if you are going to add new user so the, uh, this user number should be user ID should be six, right? So instead of hard coding, let me create a ID dynamically. Okay, private static. Why static? So inside that, uh, if any variable or any array list or any data, if we are going to use inside the static block, that member variable should be static. So that's the reason I'm taking as a static variable. Uh, let me take a user number static long user number. For the time being, I'm giving by default, I'm assigning one. Okay. So now what I can do instead of hard coding here, we can do plus plus. So what will happen? So it will auto increment. User ID will be auto increment. Let me add now. Uh, 
that's it so now here the new user which we are going to create right so now new user user id we need to set it here user id dot set user dto dot set user id user number plus plus that's it so if you add any number you can add any number of users and this id will be auto incremented so you can see here user for example here five users are there right so next uh, uh, user will be added as a number six okay user six will be is going to add next if you add another user user seven if you add another user user eight like that as many number of users you can add it into array list so now after that once you add that user let me return that user list so that uh, initially five users will be there after adding new user automatically sixth user should add it, add into our array, array list okay let me return user list updated user list that's it so this my return type should be list of user dto that's it so now we we can uh, test our create user api from postman i am going to show you how to send the data from postman o open postman so n number of uh, uh, clients are there you can you have talendar api and uh, uh, postman uh, rest restman api and rest client api so many clients are there any one you can use okay not only postman whichever you want browser for example if you see if you go to the browser there is a talent talent for chrome so this is also one more uh, uh, rest client so from here also uh, if you install this uh, talender uh, uh, extension to the browser you can test from here also so there is a rest man also there is a rest man so there is a rest man uh, software also for this one also you can add it into the browser so any any client you can use okay so now currently we are using postman so most of the companies inside they will not allow third uh, browser related uh, rest clients they will use uh, postman so you can uh, use it from postman here let me send the request now so here what is the api name so the api which you have created create user api what is the http request method post request so let me copy the user and go to postman then call that api so before that i just want to check uh, uh, who are all uh, existing users okay so let me start the server let me stop the server and then start the server. So, okay, I just started the server. Let me retrieve uh, existing user list. What is the API? If you want to fetch all the users, find user is there, is a API to fetch all the users. Find user is a one of the API to fetch all the users. Let me check existing users. You can see here how many are there? Five users are there. So, how we can test this find user API? We can test this find user API from Postman as well. How we can send? Just uh, uh, there is a address bar here. You have to give a, give your API details here, and then this is a since it is a get request, so you have to select appropriate uh, HTTP request method, the API which we are going to invoke. So find users API is a get API. That is the reason I have selected here get API. Now I am sending the request. You can see in bottom of the postman, you can see the body part of the postman you can see the all the users we have retrieved here you can see user one 
let me maximize you can see user 1 user 2 user 3 user 4 and user 5 we are able to successfully retrieve all the users so how we can find a specific user there is a find user api uh, uh, to find specific user so let me test that as well i am passing find user slash 4 i want to search user number 4 let me send the request you can see we got the response with user number 4 so this is how we can retrieve uh, data from postman so now we are going to create the data right we are going to create the user so what is the api which you have written create user api create user api so what is the method for that further what is the method post method http request method should be post method so get method uh, some people may ask sir why why not get method so get get method is used for only to retrieve the data from the server so using the get method you cannot uh, create the resource there is another way is there you can create the uh, uh, user details but you have to pass as a parameters like uh, as part of url parameter some people may have idea actually as part of parameter uh, you have to send like uh, first name question mark and last name like this so get user uh, get api doesn't have any body so whatever data you are going to send from the client so you have to send as part of body re body request as part of body request okay so now create user uh we are going to create with post request so so post request will have body post request will have body content so as part of body content we need to send the uh, the user which you want to create so let me create the user id you no need to pass because we are already generating dynamically remove that id uh let me what are the properties here first name uh let me copy any one uh, sample json here from here i we can copy right so no need to write no just copy control c then paste it here user id you no need to pass now i am going to create uh, and make sure these properties are should match actually what are all the properties you are passing from here these properties should match in dto class so now let me create create one new user let me i will create name as a let me create prabhas okay prabhas uh, last name will be p okay mobile number give any random mobile number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and should be let me give 40 and city will be mumbai so before that you can see existing user data you can see existing list how many users we have we have five users we don't have uh, user number 6 we don't have now we are going to create user number 6 with the help of uh, postman i am going to send the request the api which we have created create user api and uh, it will accept a post request and i am sending the data to create the user so let me send the request yeah let me check whether we got the response yes you can see we got the response as part of the body this is the body section of postman you can see we got the response after sending the request let me let me see whether user 6 is added or not yes successfully added you can see user 6 is being added so i now let me create one more user so so far we have only six user we can see after that there is uh, um, there is no other users only six users we have totally now let me create another user let me create another user instead of prabhas now let me put uh, charan and charan c and his mobile number let it be as is and then age i will put uh, 38 and city i will put hyderabad charan so i am going to send one more request send 
I just click on send button. So you got the response as part of body. Now let me check, let me go down whether user seven is being added or not. User four, user five, user six, user seven, you can see user seven also being added. This is how we can create one simple API to add user to array list. Very, very easy guys. So if you practice, uh, multiple times you can uh, create by your own APIs as well. Okay, it's very, very easy, simple. So web service, any any technology, not only Java, not only <clears throat> not only .NET, Python, anything. You can take any technology. The only thing is that you should learn how to send the data, how to get the data. If you know the concept of how to send the data, how to retrieve the data. Each and every technology will have this concept to send, how to send the data, how to retrieve the data. If you know how to send and how to retrieve, you can do anything. You can do anything in Spring Boot application. You just need to know how I can send data from the client and how I can uh, retrieve data from the server. If you know this simple concept, you can do anything in Spring Boot application. So now, uh, I will put breakpoint here. I will run in debug mode. So some people uh, don't know how to debug. So let me debug also. So what we can do, I uh, we can put breakpoint in line number 57. So we are going to debug our create user API. So if you want to debug your application, what we need to do, we have to run it in debug mode. There is a debug icon on top corner. You can see there is a debug icon. Just click on it. So if you run in debug mode, if you send the request, your request will come to your controller. So I just put the breakpoint here. Now let me go to Postman. Now I'm just triggering the request, invoking the request, send request. You can see our Eclipse is blinking here. Oh, dispatcher, earlier uh, I have shown you dispatcher server at uh, internal in-depth concept, right? So there is a breakpoint here. That's the reason request will come to dispatcher server at from dispatcher servlet to our controller request will come. Okay, let me skip that. So now here also I put breakpoint. Remove that. Now you can see request came to our controller. Now you can see here there is a user DTO. Just put cursor on your user DTO. You can see all the data came to our controller. You can see age, city, first name, last name, mobile number, and user ID is null. Why user ID is null? We are not passing user ID from postman. So we are, we are generating the user ID dynamically. So remaining uh, so okay, uh, remaining values also, all, all, all values, remaining values are came as part of user ID object. So this object is going to store into array list. That's it, very simple. Just you can press F6, F6. So you can see updated list. You can see how many users will be there now. So by default, it will be five users. Now uh, it will be six user will be created. So array list will start from index zero, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, five. You can see fifth user. There is a new user is being added here, Charan. So you can debug each independent value like this. User one. Uh, Rasul Sheikh, user 2, you can see Srinu and user 3, you can see Kumar, user 4, Kishore, so all the users, user 5, Prakash, user 6, Charan. So array list will start from index zero. So that's the reason we uh, our all the users will start from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now seven users is created. Now you can just uh, skip that uh, by pressing F8 button. So you will get the response as part of response body. You can see body response. You can see here user number six is being added. Like this, you can add as as many number of users in array list. This is how we can create, create user API. Okay, guys, you, you should know how to debug the code as well. So let's say if I remove this request body, assume 
I am removing this request body. What will happen? Let me start the server. Let me stop the server. So actually, whenever you are modifying the code, if you want, if these changes want to reflect into your server, we must restart the server. So let me, I don't want to restart every time. So what we can do, let me go to a palm.xml. There is a dependency called Spring Dev Tools, Spring Boot Dev Tools. Okay, let me add the dependency. So if you add the dependency, this is for only for developers, guys. This this dependency is for only for developers. So now let me, what is that? Spring Boot. There is a, you can see Spring Boot Dev Tools. There is a dependency called Spring Boot Dev Tools. That means developer tools. So we don't need a version. If you add this dependency, if any changes you are going to do in your controller or any properties file or any class, if you are going to modify, you no need to restart the server every time. Your changes will reflect automatically because of this dependency, dev tools. This is another feature in Spring Boot application. If you, let's say, let's uh, take one example. If you are writing any servlet program, or uh, any servlet program you write, once you deploy your program into your Tomcat server, so once uh, once you start the server, your, your uh, recent changes will be there. Next time, if you modify any data into servlet class, uh, you uh, those changes will not reflect. So you have you must restart the server. So now here Spring Boot, if you see in Spring Boot, it has a very awesome feature called dev tools there is a dependency called dev tools if you add this dependency you no need to restart the server whenever you are modifying your resource whenever you are modifying the resource resource in the resource nothing but your classes so whenever you are modifying your resource you no need to restart the server every time let me start now so it will ask you on launch so whether uh, Error exists in the required problems. You always launch without asking. Proceed. Just click on proceed button. So what will happen if any changes? If you see, I just clear the console. I just clear the console. I'm just putting on space and saving our Java class. What will happen? Let me know. OK, I haven't, I haven't done anything. Save. I think this jar is not downloaded or what? Let me check whether jar is downloaded or not. Spring Boot Dev Tools. This this is not a test. You know, this is not not needed. Re delete this. While copy paste by mistake, I have copied this. Let me save. Your jar will be downloaded. I think so now. Let me run the run our server. Invoke the API. How many APIs we have? Prakash, so sorry, five five users we have. Now let me do any code changes now. If you do any code changes, let me write one system dot out dot println. Then write some code. Hello, just save. You can see server is restarted again you can see console server is restarted now if you go and send a create user request create user request let me send another request to server i just send the request you can see what is the response 400 bad request why it is bad request Post to man, create user, our server not started successfully. Let me check, no, server started. Why it is bad request, let me check the console. 400 bad request, create user. Yeah, you can see here now. So I have deleted a at the rate res response body, right? You can see. So whenever you are sending data from the client, when you are sending data from the client as part of body request to retrieve that data, you need a at the rate request body at the rate request body if you remove if you remove that annotation what you got here what the exception we got you can see bad request 400 400 in the sense bad request so now 
I am going to revert back that change at the rate uh, request body. User DTO. Let me save the controller. Why change are reflect uh, Eclipse is not at all loading. Let me check what is the error. Some error it is showing. Why it is showing error? Hello world con Spring Boot application. Spring Boot tester. So no, this API uh, uh, Spring Boot test I have deleted. I think by mistake. Let me revert all the jar files i think by mr i have deleted a spring dev test that's the reason those errors are came let me add spring dev tools dependency spring dev tools okay now version we no need to pass just save the save your program now your server must start round. let me restart the server first time You can see server started successfully. So let me invoke the API now. Again, I'm going to create user. So whenever you are restarting the server, how many users will be there? By default, only five users will be there. Why? Because we are hard coded the data as part of static block. As part of static block, we have we are hard coded the data. Whenever you are restarting the server, Whatever users you have added earlier, those users will be deleted or uh, will not be reflect in our error list. So again, fresh list, fresh error list will going to load. Okay. So now let me send the request, find users. Sorry, find what is the API. Let me copy the username, user, user API. Find users. Let me copy and just go to the postman. Now this is this should be a, a get request, guys. You can see so find users is a get API, but I have selected as a post request. Let me see what will happen now if I send the request. You can see method not allowed. You can see here so find user API is a get request. You can you can go and see in our controller find user API will accept only guest get request. If you send find user API as a post request you will get an exception called error message called method not allowed. Why? Because 405, 405 in the sense method not allowed. You can see here, uh, there is a REST API basics, right? So I already mentioned here, you can go through it. Uh, bad request, oh, that is not added here, 404 bad request also. Let me go and check. What is the error here? 405, 405. You can see 405 is not added. I have not added here. 405. Oh, method not allowed. One second. Let me go. Method not allowed exception 405 is not added in the document. So, guys, uh, 200, 201, 405. Okay, I have not added. Okay, the 405 is belongs to method not allowed. Method not allowed. So, now, how you can resolve? So find user API should be you 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 always have to send as a get request. You also have to you always have to send as a get request. Then only server will accept your request. So how many users we have? We have five users. Let me create one more time another user, new user, Charan. So what is the API to create the user? Create user API. Create user. What is the request request method? Post request. I'm sending request again. You can see there is a response came back. User six Charan is being added. If you go and check the console. So earlier, uh, uh, when you send the post request, you can see as part of console, there is a exception is logged when you are sending as a post request for get API. You can see method not supported exception. Okay. So you have to try negative ways also. So why can't I send get request? Why can't I send post request? Uh, so whenever you, you uh, whenever one API is declared with the specific HTTP request method, this method will always accept get request only. 
and uh, whenever you are declaring a method as a post request and then this method will always accept post request only other than post request this method will not accept accept the request so what kind of exception you are going to get you are going to get method not supported exception so so many people will ask in interview also so let's say i have a method in a post request, but I have sent it as a get request, what will happen? What kind of execution you are going to get? Then you should immediately answer method not allowed exception. What is that exception? HTTP request method not supported exception. Okay. So this is how we can create the user. Can uh, now let me delete the user. How we can delete the user? If you want to delete the user, we need to write delete user API. So let me write one more method to delete the user. Public void. So delete user doesn't have anything. So public void uh, delete user. So I have just, just written the method. So if you want to, if you see the background, whenever I am modifying the code, server is trying to restart. If you see whenever I am modifying the code, server is uh, trying to restart again. You can see because of the dependency which we have added in the palm.xml. So if you want to delete user, what is the HTTP request method? There is a delete mapping, delete mapping annotation to delete your resource. Okay, so now let me, write the api name as delete user api so how we can delete the user how we can delete the user so you need to pass as part of the as part of the body or as part of the url you can send as a user id if you send the user id your user can be deleted so now let me i will try to delete from uh, delete user delete user okay so let me create let me select a delete URL. So if you select the delete URL, delete URL as part of delete request as part of the body, you can send one user. Let me remove all other users. Let me go to the request. Where is our request? Our request is here. So I don't want all those things. I just want user ID. What is that user ID? We just need to pass user ID. For example, I want to delete uh, user number two. So now let me implement the code now. So how, how you are going to get uh, delete user as part of the body, I am sending the request for delete API. So for that, again, you need a request to body and then pass user DTO. User DTO. So now we are going to delete uh, user from user list uh, user list object let me put user list dot if uh, there is a method you can see there is a method called remove if user list object is having method called you can remove all if you call remove all method all users will be deleted now we are going to delete specific user so for that there is a method called remove if remove if after that from this user DTO, from the uh, from uh, from uh, user, we need to find that user right specific user. If you want to delete the user number two, you have to delete only user number two. If you want to delete user number four, uh, it should delete only user number four. So for that, I am writing the predicate function uh, condition user 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 dot get let me try another user basically sometimes not at all working here user 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 dot what is that user id get user id get user id dot equals which object from here user dto dot get user id that's it so this is going to delete 
user from the list. So what I have done, user list dot remove if, and there is a, a, a lambda expression, right? How we can pass lambda, uh, lambda expression from the user list? User and give lambda expression user dot get user ID, this user ID from your list. And I am checking, uh, uh, checking whether this user ID equals to the user ID, which is passing from uh, rest uh, from postman. So when, uh, once data comes here, your user ID, uh, your user will be deleted. So let me delete updated user list. So after that, I want to okay keep it as is as of now. Now you can see, you no need to restart the server, guys. You can observe here. I am not restarting the server. So now copy that uh, API. Go to Postman and call that delete user API. So uh, this should be a delete request. Our delete delete API should all should always accept delete request, delete HTTP request. So I have selected delete as part of so user ID colon two. So remaining values you no need to give first name, last name, and uh, you no need to give actually. So you are going to delete the user specific user. You just need to pass user ID. So let me check whether that user ID. I have copied properly or not. So user ID. So it make sure that user ID should match with your DTO DTO property. User ID two. So before deleting, let me fetch uh, from the browser. Find all users. How many users we have? We have five five users. Uh, we have five users now. See uh, why sixty user is not there. Earlier we have added sixty user, right? There is no sixty user. Now I, we have modified the code. Whenever you are modifying the code, your server will restart automatically because I have added the dependency, the Spring DevTools dependency. Whenever server is restarted, so our default list will be there. Only default list will be displayed in your browser. So that's the reason we have only five users. Now, we have five users. I want to delete user number three. You can see currently, let me re send request again. You can see we have only three users, sorry, five users we have. Five users we have. I am trying to delete third user. Let me delete third user. So let me give user number three and send, send the request. So once you send the request, you got the response saying that 200. So there is no response body. Why? I have not written anything. So what is the method return type? Void. So that's the reason our response, there is no response as part of delete user API because I have not uh, returned any values as part of our API. So now request came successfully. So user is deleted and we got the response 200. So now what we can do, we can go to the browser by default, we have one, two, three, four, five. User three, we have deleted. Now, let me open new tab. Let me open new tab and just search API again. So get all the API again. You can see there is no user number three. We have only one, two, four, and five, but there is no user number three. So let me send the request. Let me delete user number four also. I'm sending the request. We got the response 200. Now let me go to the browser. Again, I'm invo invoking the request. You can see user number four also not there. We have now only three users. So say these results we, you can see in Postman also. How you can see these results in Postman? So you have to return. You have to return user list. So if you return user list, so updated list will be displayed into your postman so let me return list of user dto just save your class and then now what will happen when the moment request will let me put breakpoint uh i have run in normal mode right let me uh okay as of let me run this and show you after that i will uh, execute in debug mode so now uh, again i just modified the code right i have modified the code my server is restarted again so now what I need to do, I again, we need to retrieve the data find by find users. 
So not that API, what is the find users? Oh, method name we have to change, right? Find users is the API. So you can see method not allowed exception because I have selected a, select it as a delete request. So find users API always allow get request. Let me send. Now you can see how many users we have. We have one, two, three, four, five. So now I am going to call, uh, I'm going to invoke delete API. What is the method name? Delete user. What is the API name? Delete user. Let me go and copy paste. So delete user, copy the API, go to postman and then, then just pass. And what is the HTTP request method? For delete, delete API, delete HTTP request. Now, earlier you see, right? We have, how many users we have? Let me show you again. One, two, three, four, five. Now, I am going to delete user number four. So let me send the request. Now, immediately response came. You can see immediately response came now. Now, you can see one, two, three, and five. There is no four. You can see user one is available, user two is available, user three is available, user five is available. There is no user four. Why user four not present? We have deleted. Now let me delete user two. I just send the request. You can see here. Now user one is there. After that immediately user three is, three is there. There is no user two. Let me delete user three also. User three, I'm sending request. Let me delete another user, user five also. Let me delete user five and then send the request. You can see I have deleted all the users except user one. Let me delete user one also. So what will happen? At the end, you will get empty list. So this is how we can create delete user api this is how we can create delete user api now i will show you how to debug let me stop the server run let me run always debug mode so we no need to restart every time okay so developer should always developer should always run in debug mode so now let me go to our controller i am i am keeping breakpoint here delete api Delete user API is there, right? So line number 67, I just put the breakpoint now. So I, I, just our server is restarted, right? Now all the users will be available now. Let me find users and select get, get HTTP request method. So you have all five users. Now we are going to debug now. So where I put the breakpoint in delete API. Let me click on delete API. Create call that delete user. Delete user API with the help of your delete request HTTP method. I am passing user number two. I want to delete user number two. So currently we have user number two, right? You can see user number two we have. Now I am going to delete user number two. Let me send the request. You can see bottom of the laptop taskbar, you can see the Eclipse is blinking. So breakpoint came. You can see if you debug uh, user, user DTO, you can see only user ID will be there. There is a user ID which I, have, I am passing from post to man, user two. So remaining values, we are not passing remaining values. So user ID only we are passing. To delete the user, we no need remaining all the values. We just need user ID. You can debug like this. User ID is coming number two. User ID two is came. And this remove if method is being executed and it will check, it will compare. It will compare whether this user ID available in our array list or not. If it is there, then immediately it will delete. You just need to press F6. If you press F6, it will execute next statement. So sorry, by mistake, I pressed uh, F5. If you if you press F5, it will go more in depth actually. So press F8 now, F8 now, request will come. So five users, right, it's searching. All, all six users, it is searching that user ID inside that list. It is searching for user number two. After all the, uh, once after all iterations are completed, 
next uh, control will come to return method, return statement. You can see here, here also you can debug whether your user is deleted or not. Right click on this object and then there is a option called inspect element. You can see where is that inspect element. You can go down. Why inspect is not showing. Let me try again. You put cursor. Inspect element. This Eclipse always having some problems. Not showing. So let me run. Next time I, I will send another request. Function F8. So now you can see request came. Uh, so request went. Now we don't have user number two. You can see user one only is there. User two only is there. So let me debug. Let me debug. I, I am removing debug point here. I am keeping break, break point in return statement. So you can debug your object in controller itself. How you are going to debug? Let me show you now. So now here, I am going to delete now user number three. Let me send the request. So control directly came to user list. You can see control directly came to return user list statement. Now you can put cursor here. You can see uh, user number three. Uh, uh, what uh, as part of request check which value is came as part of the request user number three. So user number three, I am deleting from user list. So now check whether user number three is there. No, you can see here. Click uh, put cursor on user list object. Then select it then expand it here you can see user 1 is there user 4 is there then user 5 is there so user number 3 is not there now you can you can execute your statement you can see there is no user number 3 only user 1 is there user 4 is there user 5 is there so this is how you we can write delete api simple delete api so in real world, actually, whenever you are doing in real time projects, right? Whenever you are working on your real time project, we should not write business logic in controller. Generally, this is only testing purpose. I have written all the logic uh, API I have written and inside that API itself, I have written the business logic. Uh, insert user, update user, delete user. Uh, so we have not update user. Okay, we have not written update user API. Okay, we'll write that uh, update user. I will give you requirement to you. Okay. So can you, uh, before coming to your class, can you write update user API? So try your own. Okay. Tomorrow I will explain you how to write update, update user API. If possible, try by your own by writing update user API. I will give the hint also how, how we can create update user API. Create one method and pass same so that should update api should be uh, request method should be post uh, either post or either put put method use uh, put delete mapping sorry put mapping uh, use annotation put put mapping and then pass as part of body request pass uh, user dto and then from the user list what you can do, you can stream the, the user list has string method and then filter your uh, which user you are, you are going to update. Here I, I already written. This is how you have to wrote to update the user. So user list dot stream, user dot get user ID. Once it is matched successfully, then find user dot get. So get method will return your user object then dot set method there is a setter method however we can see dot set method whichever you want to delete just call that method and that's it so your update api will work okay so this is how we can write simple apis with the array list so only thing is that we should not write business logic inside the controller in real time environment Whenever you are working in your companies or your organization, we should not write business logic in controller. We should. So let me open the PDF. So as part of the REST architecture, you can see here, Spring Boot architecture, you can see here, uh, there is a, a controller, right? So after controller, there is another layer called service layer. So service layer is having capability to handle all the business logic. We have to write business logic inside the service method, not in controller. 
so tomorrow i will write service class then we'll move all the business logic into the service class and then that service class we have to call from your controller that we can do tomorrow okay guys so now today we just learn what we learn today how to create a user api and how to write a delete user api and uh, how to send request from postman and uh, how to debug the code so today we uh, we learned all those things so tomorrow we are not going to write business logic inside the controller we are going to write business logic in inside the service layer as part of architecture we need to write uh, business logic in inside the service layer guys make sure you guys are practicing every day and i am telling again and again make sure you have to practice every day with multiple examples okay then only you you are going to achieve uh, your development skills improvement okay we'll catch you tomorrow